This is just a reiteration of what I talked about in your class. So if you want to pull out your Slinky Lab and add a few notes on there, it'll be important for you to learn before our test because conceptual con uh, these conceptual ideas are going to be the bulk of your test for Unit 6. Okay, let's move on to a review of the Slinky Lab. So I want you to tell me, this is all review, which one moves faster and why? Is it going to be the longitudinal wave or is it going to be the transverse wave? You should be able to draw as well as type into this. So I also want you to tell me why do longitudinal waves move faster or why do transverse waves move faster based on what we talked about from the Slinky Lab. I got a variety of meanings. They're all really good. I had a lot of students not quite sure why, even though they knew that the answer here is longitudinal. And the reasoning, so I had several. Here's the reasoning I put, because the vibration of the coils or the particles in the medium move in the same direction as the wave's motion. The movement is parallel. And um, I can play the video here for you. Just, I think everyone got the same conclusion, but I used the same wave, uh, the same slinky. And you can see in slow motion that it's going to hit the end sooner than this one. I also had a lot of students state that they had more, dis that the transverse wave had more displacement. It had to move a further distance in the perpendicular direction than the longitudinal wave. That's not always the case, but definitely the fact that they're moving to parallel to each other means that it's going to have less resistance and less slowdown. So longitudinal is faster for sure. Okay, next question. Which is going to have the faster speed, higher low tension? We already talked about this in our um, warm up, but I want you to explain, don't just answer, but explain why. Okay, let's talk about this one. So everyone answered the correct answer. It's the high tension that goes faster. Let's go ahead and watch the video. And I know all of you got the same results, but this is high tension. Hit the end faster, low tension. So a lot of students mentioned that it was because of the number of coils that makes it move faster. There's less coils to travel through. When we're thinking about a slinky, um, and thinking about coils that might be true, but it doesn't necessarily work when we're talking about air particles um, and things like that, so, or um, any other types of medium. Other students talked about the higher energy there is when you have a spring tighter. When we talk about a spring's energy, we talk about the energy that is transferred when it launches something, like when we are stretching a rubber band and it launches. That creates more, um, more speed. In this case, we're creating, we could be creating a longitudinal coil. This is a transverse type of wave. The real reason why it creates a faster wave is something called a restorative force. If it's tighter, then it's going to have more force pulling the wave back into equilibrium and, and then back back and forth through that wave motion. So it's the restorative force that creates the faster speed because it's trying to bring that wave back into center with more force than a much looser spring. Any questions on this one? So it's called something, it's something called restorative force. Last one was higher low density. Which one is going to be Faster, why do you think so? And this is where we use both a plastic and a metal um, spring or slinky. And then this one was pulled taut because we wanted that tension to be the same and not affect that factor. So why do you think so? Which one is going to be move faster, low or high density? And explain why. The why is just as important as your answer. Okay, this one was not as consistent as the last few. I had some people answer high density. 
I had some people answer low density. Let's actually watch the video for this. So we've got, this one had a little bit more room for error because you had to make sure that the tension was equal. So you really had to tighten up that, um, that plastic slinky. If you did set it up correctly, you should have seen that the plastic, which is low density, let's wait for it, is going to hit the end faster by a little bit, but it is going to hit the end faster than the high, the high density. And the reasoning behind this is because of inertia. A lot of students answered that there's more mass to move which means that it's going to have more resistance to motion. And that by definition, or by physics definition, is inertia. The less mass you have to move, the, fa the faster it's going to go, the less resistance you're going to have. The more mass you have, like in the me metal spl uh, slinky, you're going to have more resistance. So it's going to move slower. So in conclusion, are there any questions on this? Longitudinal is faster, high tension is faster, and then make sure, for those of you who um, didn't get this correct, low density is faster. All right, we already watched the next two slides, which were the videos of the guitar. So I'm gonna move on to analyzing wave interactions. So when you see Two waves interacting here. As I play this video, I want you to very carefully look and see what happens when they combine. What do you notice? And then what are your questions about what's happening? So I'll go ahead and play it for you, but you can play it over and over again on your, your own screen. What happens when they come together? And then what questions do you have about this situation? There are lines on the floor to help you analyze this. So I want you to pay attention to these lines on the floor as well. They give you some good um, methods of analyzing what's happening. I had students say that they bounced off each other. I had students say they go through each other. And then a lot of students place this as their wonder. Are they bouncing? Are they going through? That's our question, right? We don't know from this visual itself. And then what did you notice? So some students were able to notice that as they combine, the amplitude hit its highest point. So here's one wave, two waves, and then it hit its maximum as they combine. Now we don't know, did they bounce off each other? Did they go through each other? But what we do know is that one amplitude and another amplitude may double the amplitude. So that's a good observation. Next, I have waves on opposite sides. So one is here in the positive, one is here in the negative. Observe what happens and what do you wonder? So I'll play this several times. Pay attention to those lines on the ground. What do you observe? So, what a couple of students have said, I, I noticed two kind of patterns. One is that they bounce off each other and then flip sides. So they're seeing it bounce off each other and then flip sides. I have another group of students say that they actually go through each other and for a moment cancel each other out. So as this goes here, they cancel, become flat, and then it continues in the other direction. So those are two really good observations. We don't quite know what's happening yet, just by observing this, but we're going to do a couple of simulations to analyze it a little bit further. Are they bouncing? 
Are they going through each other? Are they canceling each other out or are they flipping on the opposite side? Okay, the last one is two separate heights. They're gonna be on the same side, but one's gonna be higher than the other. What do you observe here? One large and one small wave, what happens? What do you notice? What do you? This last video is starting to clarify some of your questions from the first two. So I'll go ahead and play it one more time. I still have a few students that still need to answer, but if you really look at this and analyze it carefully, it should be able to answer some of the questions that you're wondering. Okay, so for this video, I had several students finally decide that they are actually going through each other. And we'll analyze this in, in, uh, very carefully. The most common answer though, is that they clearly hit a maximum height. So let's look at this together. First, we've got a two unit, one unit combining to three units right at the middle. So that lets us know that our amplitudes are actually adding together. Then some students noticed after they've collided that the waves went through each other because the bigger wave ended up on the left and the smaller wave ended up on the right. So let's watch this carefully. We've got a big wave and a small wave. They add up to make one big one. And then the big wave and the small wave end up on the opposite side. So this is our evidence that waves don't bounce, they travel through each other. And we also have evidence that the amplitudes added together. In the previous one where students asked, well, it looks like they might be canceling out, but other students said they might be bouncing and then just flipping sides. If we know that they actually go through each other, then we would know from the previous wave that they're actually combining to cancel and then traveling through on the other side. So this is how wave interactions happen. The next few slides I'm gonna have you do on your own. So I'm going to um, stop the teacher pace and you should be able to go through the student pace version of this, open up the simulation. When you watch the simulation, you're gonna see blue and yellow, which represents the left and the right wing and how they interact. So go ahead and do the simulation. There are some questions in some of the slides that you need to answer. And again, look at these yellow and blue dotted lines. That's going to give you an indication as to whether they're passing through or bouncing off because it indicates which wave is the left wave and which wave is the right wave. Oh, yes. Okay. So, vocabulary. Constructive interference and destructive interference. Discuss wave interaction. Constructive means that the waves add together to make a bigger wave. And then destructive means the waves cancel or subtract. from each other to make a smaller or no wave. Basically, they cancel each other out. And then what were the other vocabulary words in there? Um, what was it? And then wave pulse. So wave pulse is just one wave. 
one um, disturbance in the medium. 